Hey, good morning, Nancy. So as you mentioned, an astonishing turn of events over the last couple of days. The news coming out from Riyadh, Saudi officials essentially saying that they confirm that Mr. Khashoggi did die in the Istanbul consulate. Uh, we heard from the foreign minister just two days ago. But interestingly enough, we've now seen new reports, one coming out of Reuters, citing a senior Saudi official, changing that story up a bit as well, saying it wasn't a fistfight necessarily. A lot of questions surrounding what actually happened here and begging for more investigation, whether you're sitting in Europe today, whether you're sitting in the United States. A lot of folks are saying none of this really does add up. And certainly what's been really interesting to see is that of all of the things that we We've seen over the last couple of years that have really driven a wedge between Republicans and Democrats, impossible for them to find common ground on just about anything. It seems as if the death of Mr. Khashoggi has done just that. Let's listen in. We are to expel, formally expel the Saudi ambassador from the United States until there is a completion of a third party investigation into this kidnap, murder, and God knows what followed uh, that occurred in Istanbul. We should call on our allies to do the same. Unless the Saudi kingdom understands that civilized countries around the world are going to reject this conduct and make sure that they pay a price for it, they'll continue doing it. Do you believe the crown prince was ordered this killing? Senator Corker uh, this morning says he believes that the crown prince himself ordered this. I believe it. Five of his top personal bodyguards are those among those currently accused in the 18. His personal bodyguards. And one of them has said publicly a year ago, I don't move without an ex order from the executive. The crown prince has his fingerprints all over this, and the fact that he is heading up the investigation makes it totally incredible. The same question that I had for Senator Durbin. Is there any part of the Saudi uh, government's explanation that you find credible? No, not at this point. I agree with everything Dick Durbin just said. We've, uh, we've got to get to the bottom of it. In Saudi Arabia, you do not do something of this magnitude without having clearance from the top. We need to find out who that is and hold them accountable. Pretty incredible turn of events there, Nancy. We've got Democrats and Republicans taking to the airwaves on the Sunday morning show in that, as we say, Washington echo chamber and really reiterating that they don't buy the explanation coming out of Saudi Arabia. And of course, that's echoing sentiments, at least on the Republican side, that we heard earlier in the week from Senator Lindsey Graham as well as Marco Rubio. But I think it's really interesting to take a step back here because this is a question of allies. It's a question of jobs. And certainly it's a question of what's going to happen over the next couple of days here in Riyadh along the sidelines of this future investment in Initiative. We saw so many international and American CEOs pulling back here, those who are involved heavily with the Saudis in terms of investments, and yet they decided not to come to this a big Davos in the desert that's been built over the last few months as a major investment forum. It's the second annual conference here. They decided not to come, but certainly others are not going to be shying away, including the Russians. Yes, Hadley, and it's such a stark contrast to what we saw last year. I know you were at the FII meeting then, and there was so much optimism and hope around what was taking place in the way of reform in Saudi Arabia. A very different story, which makes me think the stakes are so high for Saudi Arabia. They really have a lot to prove, given what we've seen in the way of the response from foreign investors so far. And as you rightly point out, the political response in Washington not dying down. It's only ratcheting up. And Call me cynical here, but with just very close now to the midterm elections, I don't think any of these lawmakers want to be caught on the wrong side of a moral issue either. So perhaps we're only going to see this outrage increase. But I think part of the issue, as you point out, is the difference in the story that we've seen, somewhat of a back and forth. Many are concerned that not all the facts have been revealed, revealed to date. And that was a key part of the interview taking place between the Saudi foreign minister on Fox News with Brett Baer. You would have seen this one. Let's just play a clip here because Brett Baer really pressed the Saudi foreign minister on what exactly happened and how it was possible, if it is possible, that MBS didn't know about these sequence of events. Take a listen to what happened in that interview. There obviously was a tremendous mistake made, and what compounded the mistake was the attempt to try to cover up. That is unacceptable in any government. These things unfortunately happen. We have been very clear that we will leave no stone unturned. The relationship is a hugely important strategic relationship for both countries. I believe that uh, when the investigation is over and the facts are revealed and people know who was responsible and see those individuals being punished and see procedures put in place to prevent this from happening, that the relationship will weather this. 
So there you have it, Amiya Kalpa there coming from the Saudi Arabian foreign minister. But Hadley, you've talked quite frequently here on this program about the top-down structure in Saudi Arabia. I think many in Washington are having a difficult time getting their head around how there could be so many details missing from this case. I mean, in that interview, the Saudi foreign minister said very bluntly, we don't know what happened with the body. And many of those lawmakers we were just talking about in Washington are saying, how is that possible? Exactly. And the Saudi foreign minister, they're saying, we don't know what happened to the body. The Turks are saying, we do, and we're going to be sharing it on Tuesday. It's difficult mm -hmm. to know who to believe at this point. Certainly so many competing narratives. Now, I have spoken uh, to the Saudi foreign minister, Adel al -Jaber, many, many times. You may not remember this, but back around 9-11, he was really uh, the spokesman for the Saudi government in those very, very difficult times for Saudi Arabia just following 9-11. And he really had a, a major amount of credibility, not just in circles in Washington as spokesman and then ambassador there for Saudi Arabia, but also over the last several years in particular when it comes to the conversations being had about what to do about Iran, about the growing hegemony, about the fact that Iran Iran is what he said to me, the greatest exporter of terror uh, globally. And I think it's interesting to note that Mr. al -Jaber, we didn't see him for the first couple of weeks. He was staying very, very close. And now we see him coming out with this statement. And only hours later, another conflicting report coming out, I believe this one from Reuters, essentially quoting another Saudi government official saying a bit of a different version of events. So, so many competing narratives. It's difficult to know what is the actual truth here. I think a lot of Saudis are even having a difficulty believing what they're hearing from their government at this point. And all of it, of course, reflected in the Saudi stock market with over a billion U.S. dollars wiped off the market in the last several days. So certainly a story that we're going to continue to watch that not only has major implications for that U.S.-Saudi relationship, Nancy, but also has major implications for this Saudi Vision 2030 and what's going to happen next. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.